Hello and welcome to the video. This is an OpenTX tip. I would call it a quick tip, but it's not really a quick tip. This is going to get into uh, the weeds a little bit with OpenTX. I'm not going to use anything really sophisticated, but we're going to be layering on lots of different things. And it's to answer the question from a patron of mine, a gentleman called Ted, who very kindly got in touch and his opening line was, uh, being as you're an OpenTX master, dot, 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 which is very kind of him. I think I'm a talented amateur. I wouldn't call myself a master by any stretch of the imagination. But what Ted is after, he's seen a video where somebody had set up a flying wing with uh, two ailerons. So normally the way that elevons work at the back of a model, uh, particularly a flying wing, is that they they op they operate in opposite ways. So they, they act as elevator, but they also act as... Uh, ailerons too and these elevons uh, are, are what you've seen in loads and loads of my builds now this particular build that had been quite clever he was trying to introduce some kind of rudder control and what he had was actually two aileron or elevons each side and they would operate in tandem hopefully you can kind of see that in the little image in this uh, video but then when he wanted to break he had them flaring open to provide a break on one side and that acted like a rudder so that's what Ted got in touch and said, um, how do you do that? Because some of the guys uh, at the club who do soaring and stuff like that could find that really interesting. So Ted, this is for you. So if you're watching this and interested in that and want to kind of just kind of um, spend the next 10 minutes with me figuring this out, grab yourself a cup of tea, cup of coffee, can of Coke, and we'll go through everything. Let's just reacquaint ourselves with some of the basics here before we get too far into the weeds. Let me just simulate this radio. This is a regular radio setup. Let's just move everything so you can kind of see it. Um, as I move the aileron left and right, you can see that channel two and three will be plugged into those elevons at the back of the wing, and we can see they're moving in opposite directions for the, uh, the roll command, and they're moving in unison for the pitch. Now, in reality, when you'd set this up, it might not work exactly this way. I'm just doing it this way so that the graph, the little sliders on the right hand side, make it easy to follow. But that's how it works. You kind of like you're banking right and left, and then you'll uh, have both things working at the same time for your elevator. And those are mixed together in the mixes so that you have both the elevator and the um, aileron kind of working on both. Okay, still with me. Now, what I've done here is I have made that mixes a little bit more complicated. It looks really complicated, but it obviously it's not, trust me. It's obvious when you realize what I've done. All I've done is I have copied um, the same thing twice. So we have this, channel 2 and channel 3 are the same, channel 4 and channel 5 are the same. So we can simulate that. So now as things move... We kind of have the same thing, okay? I could fix that with the elevator direction, but you get the idea, okay? The way it works is that these are slaved together. So what you could do is have channel two as maybe the top of the two um, ailerons at the back of one side of the wing, and then channel three would be the bottom one. And the idea is because they're always moving in tandem, they're kind of moving together. You're not getting into trouble. So that's how that works. All you do is you just kind of copy um, the standard setting that we had in the first basic setup, that first intro. All we're doing is we're just copying it so that we have two sets of that so that we can control the upper and lower control surfaces on both sides. Channel two and three can do one side, channel three, channel four and five can do the other. Still with me? Super. Okay. So let's talk about how I've added that rudder in. Um, so if I just simulate it, let me just show you very quickly. Again, it works in the same way. If I move the uh, pitch stick, um, they all work in the same direction. Roll makes the elevons on both sides work in tandem. And this time, as I move the rudder left and right, you can see that the back, those two elevons would actually open up with butterfly, creating drag, um, and then causing the wing to slew around, imitating the effect of rudder. That will give you your control. Now, this uh, is quite easy in one way. All I've done is I've kind of added in the mix 
uh, up the rudder in but you can't just do the rudder uh, like that because the rudder goes positive and negative as it moves around the middle position you just want it to work in one direction so there's a trick that I've used here I've created two new inputs for a flying wing one called rudder a rudder 2 sorry not very imaginative naming here one is only working for the negative side of the stick and you might have seen this stick side down here and wonder what it was for this is the kind of stuff you can use it for and then the other one surprise surprise is the stick side positive so that means that these only work when the stick is traveling in one of the directions around the midpoints that is the little trick then to make it work so for this side we can see it's connected to rudder and rudder is the one that only works on the negative side of the stick and then these are actually connected to rudder 2 and rudder 2 is the one that works on the positive side of the stick and what that means is that as I move the stick around the middle position the butterfly effect only works uh, for the side that it needs to work. So I'm just cover that again very quickly because that was, might have confused a couple of people. So basically, rather than just mix the rudder into the different channels, what I'm doing is I'm mixing just the direction that I'm interested in and I'm separating that direction out into two separate channels for um, one way and the other. And then in the mixes, I'm adding those rudders in uh, rudder and rudder 2 into the individual controls and that means that the rudder only affects the side I'm interested in when it's in the right side. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. What I'll do is I'll link down below to uh, this file so if you want to load it in companion and have a look you absolutely can. So that's how that bit works. Now the last one is with the air brake and I'm adding this in. Ted hasn't really asked about this but I thought you know what we'll stick it in anyway. This is one extra little step. Again, it's working the same way. Uh, it's a weird little bug with Companion. Uh, I have to just kind of flick SH to uh, get it to reset. Shouldn't have to do that, but you know, this is one of the fun things. Be careful when you're using Companion like this that you are making sure that when you copy it onto the model, it works in the same way. Companion, Companion sometimes has a couple of little features. Um, and sometimes the OpenTX implementation on the radio and the way it emulates it in Companion isn't exactly the same. For 99% of things, it's probably fine, but occasionally if you use some of the sophisticated stuff, you can come across one of those little discrepancies, let's call them. So here we are in uh, the same setup. So it's working the same way. Uh, the roll command works with the two elevons at the back of each wing. The pitch works and they're working in tandem we have our cool little rudder now which butterflies them on one particular side or the other to operate a rudder effect and now we also have this extra one as well where we can flick a switch and they will uh, the butterflies will open and act as an air brake now how have i done that if we go into mixes um, there's a little bit of extra stuff in the input. Let's actually cover that. So in input, what I've done is I've called it break. Uh, it's coming from SH. I've, I'm just using a very small amount of that and also offsetting as well. So the switch works in one uh, position only. Because remember, if you don't set the offset, it just kind of goes uh, kind of minus 20, plus 20. If you set an offset, then it kind of goes 0 to 40. So using these, I need to do that just so it operates in one direction. Again, if you want to download this and have a play and see how it works, you can. Now that then gives me something I can use in the mixes to surprise, surprise, add it into each of the channels just like we did with the rudder. However, I only need the one break this time. I can just use the values here uh, to decide which direction it's going in. So you can see that they see the minus 100 or 100. And the only other thing I've done here is I've just added half a second uh, slow to uh, for the brakes to slide into position just to give you a slightly uh, less jolty experience as a pilot. So again, let's just see how that works with air brake simulate. So here we have the full mix for your TED. Um, we have the two elevons on the right and left side of the wing operating in tandem. 
God, open text is funny sometimes. Uh, open it and, and working in tandem for both pitch and uh, roll. We have the ability for them to butterfly a little bit and provide your control. And then if we want to break, we can pull the SH switch and have all of them butterfly open and slow the model down. Again, links in the description if you want to download and have a look at this. But hopefully after me going through it, it makes a little bit more sense. Thank you for watching my video and watching right to the very end. If you want to find out what I'm currently working on, you can follow me on social media by searching for Painless360 in the usual places. If you'd like to become part of the Inner Circle, then you can become a Patreon. Details are in the description and you get lots of additional benefits. Check out the playlist section on the channel too. I organize all of my videos into playlists and it's called something like Introduction to or for Beginners. All of the content is aimed so that you can start at the very beginning and it teaches you that subject starting with simple principles and moving up to teach you everything you need to know.